from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's in every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show. Things. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are broadcasting from a movie studio. The picketers took the day off. I guess the uh, very happy about the results of the Golden Globe Awards. For those of you uh, who are not aware, the Golden Globe Awards, which originate at the Beverly Hilton Hotel here in Law, actually it's in Los Angeles. It's on the it's on the cusp of Century City in Beverly Hills, but not quite in Beverly Hills, despite its name. Like the Beverly Center would like to be in Beverly Hills, but it's not. You can charge more if it says Beverly in the name. That's the way it is. So anyway, the Golden Globe Awards take place every year at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. And uh, it is an award show uh, that uh, kind of gives us a sneak peek at what might be nominated for Oscars or Emmys because it um, it involves awards for both uh, movie and te- movies and television. And um, last I looked, unlike the Motion Picture Academy... The um, the foreign Hollywood Foreign Press Association, I think, has 66 or 67 members that vote on the Golden Globe Awards. And for those of you who don't know, the Screen Actors Guild has decided to join in solidarity with the Writers Guild of America. Now, they decided to boycott the Golden Globe Awards last night. NBC regularly pays, I believe, it's a million dollars to Dick Clark Productions to produce the Golden Globe Awards. And NBC generally has the exclusive rights to broadcast those awards. And uh, most of the action takes place, you know, (laughs) on a red carpet outside the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Years ago, the Golden Globe Awards were not even televised. Uh, It was a uh, drunken affair. In fact, I once attended, so that's how I know. Um, Moe Chandon uh, provides um, free White Star champagne, and the actors were not dressed in their finest in the days before TV. They showed up any which way they liked. They drank copious amounts of champagne. They gave outrageous acceptance speeches, which were not seen live on television. It was kind of like a sloppy, drunken Friars Club roast. That's the best way I can describe it. Then sometime in the 90s, NBC got the rights to broadcast the Golden Globe Awards, and suddenly there was a red carpet. Suddenly people were hiring stylists. And suddenly people were arriving for the Golden Globes like it was a big event like the Oscars. But again, remember... It's the Hollywood Foreign Press Association with about 66, 66, not 6,600, not 66,000, 66 members. They vote on, you know, the best movie and the best TV show, but whatever. And uh, these awards are given out. But, and, you know, we all know nobody really gives a rat's ass anymore about who wins awards. Award shows so your girlfriend and her gay friends can sit down and watch what people are wearing on television. That's all it is. In fact, there's been talk that the ratings for the Oscars aren't as good as they used to be. And one of the reasons speculated for that is there were so many pre-shows with red carpet uh, coverage that by the time the pre-shows are over, we know what everybody's wearing. 
Now, who's really seen any of the movies nominated for an Oscar? So, therefore, people watch the pre-shows. They skim off all the good stuff, like what's everybody wearing? And then everybody goes off and does something else. There's a lot of people who don't watch the Oscars anymore and a lot of the other award shows. See, at least the Grammy Awards, they got religion a few years ago because they realized that they were going to have to nominate artists who had a hit record in our time, not classical music artists. But my God, the Grammy Awards in the 80s and going back from the 80s, uh, it was always uh, uh, Yasha Heifetz and uh, Yo-Yo Ma winning uh, awards. And nobody who ever sold a hit record ever won a Grammy Award. Beatles didn't win any Grammy Award. I don't think the Beatles ever won a Grammy Award. Or the Rolling Stones. None of the uh, popular artists of those years ever won Grammy Awards. It was always Andy Williams and Henry Mancini and Arturo Toscanini, who was the leader of the NBC Orchestra. By the way, look it up. So later, the Grammy Awards got religion. Grammy Awards started featuring artists who actually sold records this year and actually now give Grammy Awards to people who engage in popular culture as opposed to making a jazz album that 47 people bought. So now, even if you've seen what people are wearing to the Grammy Awards, there's a reason to watch the award show itself because then people are going to go out and perform their work. But the Oscars, what are you going to see there? Elizabeth Taylor stumbling out and trying to read off a cue card? Ugh. Eh. <laughs> so what's happened now is that the award shows are largely a fashion show. That red carpet is a fashion runway, and that is the purpose of covering award shows. Not because people really... I mean, you hear about some of the movies that were nominated for Golden Globes. Maybe you haven't. You probably haven't. Trust me, most of these are movies you haven't seen and you are not going to see. How many people saw 310 to Yuma? Right. How many saw There Will Be Blood? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And that's what the Oscars going to be, too. A bunch of movies that, you know, critics saw. Other people in the movie industry saw these movies. But but nobody, nobody who goes to a multiplex in Dallas has seen any of these movies. Okay? And that's why, you know... Your, your girlfriend, your wife, and, and, and their gay friends, they, they will watch the pre-shows, and then they'll move on during the awards part of the show. Well, you can only imagine. I, we haven't seen the ratings yet. But you can only imagine what happened to the Golden Globe Awards last night, because the Golden Globes last night had no celebrities. I mean none. If you go to the Golden Globes official website... They have photographs, the most famous people who were there. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I looked it up before I came on the air. The most famous people there are the people presenting the awards, like Jim Moray. And who's that uh, chick from Extra? And somebody from The Insider. And, and that's it. These were the biggest celebrities to show up. Uh, actors and actresses, directors... Uh, nobody showed up to pick up their awards because everybody boycotted the Golden Globe Awards. And NBC, which originally was going to pay a million dollars for the rights, I guess they withdrew their offer because there was nothing to show, and instead they decided to cover it like a quote-unquote news event. But what was the news? I mean, the reality is the Golden Globes were reduced to what they were years ago. It was a news conference where they sat there and they read the list of winners. And then somebody would go up and collect each award, somebody you've never seen or heard of, and you don't really care what they're wearing. Oh, I, I imagine NBC's ratings for last night were frighteningly bad. I mean horrific. I mean terrible. I think more people could were concerned about how Andrew Bynum was going to fare last night than what was happening at the Golden Globes. You know what I'm talking about? If you're an NBA fan, you know what I'm talking about. While the Golden Globes were on, I was trying to get updates on Andrew Bynum's knee. That's what I was doing. Because I'm not gay and I'm not your girlfriend, okay? And, and by the way, I bet a lot of gay people and girlfriends and wives all just, you know, what they do last night? <laughs> what were they watching? The Sarah Connor Chronicles? I don't know. So...
technically there was a Golden Globe Awards program last night. But in reality, nobody really probably stood around to watch it because it was devoid of any celebrities. Wow. See, now that it's award season, those writers are really going <laughs> to... When the writers start killing off the Oscars and the Golden Globes, that, that's when the networks are really going to start to cry uncle. If they just hang in there, they're going to win this thing, but they, they have to keep going. That's the bottom line. Anyway, uh, we have, of course, something that we have been presenting for many years on this program that, uh, well, put it this way, uh, we have all the celebrity action you can possibly handle. But uh, this is the award show for straight guys. It's for straight guys like you, okay? Because uh, this is not the Golden Globe Awards we're about to present to you, no. No, this is something totally different. It is our annual presentation. The Tom Likas Show presents the Golden Globes Awards. Live from Hollywood, California, it's the Tom Likas Show Golden Globes Awards. The award show where you, the horny listener, decide who has the best breasts in Hollywood. And now... Your host for tonight's star-studded festivities, Tom Likas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here yeah. we go. Come on. Yep. NBC couldn't get it done, but we're going to get it done here with our annual Golden Globes Awards. And let us talk about some of the nominees. Now, I don't agree with all of these nominees, of course, like any award show. Uh, we'll tell you who the nominees are, and I'll give you my opinions of some of these. And then you will give us, of course, when you call us at 1-800-5800-TOM, uh, you will give us your vote for the best breasts in Hollywood. And uh, I am looking at a list of nominees here. Some of them are fantastic. Some of them not so fantastic. Now, remember, we're not judging beauty here. So if somebody has breasts that are essentially a couple of thimbles... And there's not much else going on there. It doesn't matter how beautiful they are, Kate Moss. It doesn't matter. A couple of track marks. You know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. This is the best breasts in Hollywood. So let's take a look at uh, some of the nominees here. And uh, some of these are, you know, perpetual uh, nominees uh, who get votes on a regular basis on our annual Golden Globes Awards. Uh, of course, uh, no list would be complete without Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano, just fantastic. I'm looking at a picture. Those are great knockers. And they've been great knockers since it was illegal to even look at Alyssa Milano. Just fantastic. I'm going in alphabetical order here, and I'm, I'm, I'm cherry-picking some of these because I have comments about some of them. Other ones I may just skip over. But here's one that's on the list because she's won awards and she has a television show. Uh, America Ferreira, the woman who plays Ugly Betty. Now, I like Latinas as much as the next person. But America Ferreira, who was the star of that fantastic movie, Real Women Have Curves, in which she was even fatter than she is today. Uh, they're trying to sell her as some glamorous chick, and the reality is she is just, she may be a very nice person, and she appears to be a very nice person. But even the knockers, there's just not much going on there. Not much going on in the way of knockers. For a chick with a butt like that, you would think there'd be bigger knockers to go with it. I'm not seeing it. And for me to put thumbs down on a Latina is very rare, as you know. Uh, perennial favorite Angelita Jolie is on the list of nominees, of course. Uh, do I really care about her personal life or the fact that she insanely flies around the world trying to adopt children? With, uh, by the way, America's most pussy whip celebrity. That's going to be another award show we're going to have. Uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Brad Pitt running around the world with Angelina Jolie adopting children. You know, baby. Um, my, one of my favorite all time bodies, Beyonce. Beyonce. I mean,. Now, I do think Beyonce has to be very careful. I think she has to stick to the celery sticks and stuff because I do think she has uh, potential to uh, to blow up and become one of the weather girls if she's not careful. 
But um, I think as she is currently constructed, and I mean that in every sense of the word, I think that Beyonce is just killer. Killer. Great boobs, great everything else, but the boobs, fantastic. Now, I have on the list here also Cameron Diaz. Now, it's hard getting past that pizza face. I'm sorry. I, I, ever since somebody pointed out that HDTV was going to be the worst thing that ever happened to Cameron Diaz, I can't help now looking closely. Just like you see Tina Fey's huge scar on her face in HD, no matter how much makeup they put on it. Cameron Diaz. I, they didn't have Clearasil uh, in the LBC or something. I don't know what was going on. Yikes. Uh, boobs? You know, uh, clearly from a distance, she no doubt was a model for many years, a supermodel, if you will. Uh, but big boobs, like many supermodels, just not her stock and trade. So again, Latina, but not big boobs. <laughs> I don't get it. Courtney Cox, by the way, her husband, he called in here a few weeks ago. He's a listener. And, um, you know, good actress. Did a good job at some of these TV shows and stuff. She was in that Bruce Springsteen video many years ago. You know, the way she dresses, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of knockers are under there. He would know better. I don't know. That one is kind of a mystery. Because she doesn't dress slutty or skimpily in, in very many programs or in public. So you really don't know what's under there. Maybe he can enlighten us. I don't know. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Now, she's got to be on anybody's list. This is a woman who had breast reduction surgery, and we know that for sure. Drew Barrymore. Even after breast reduction surgery, those are great breasts. Remember she showed them to David Letterman years ago? Nice knockers. Now, here's a woman on the list. Many people think she's glamorous, gorgeous, another Latina. And again, the women I'm seeing as nominees here, the Latinas have no breasts. Eva Longoria? She's the flattest Mexican female I've ever seen. Ever. I've seen many. She's as flat as they get. That's two thimbles. That's it. There's nothing else going on there. Nothing. But for Tony Parker, I'll bet she's a real spinner. That's right, I said a real spinner. That's what I said. Evangeline Lilly? Yeah, good knockers there. I like those. Very nice. Heidi Klum, always been great knockers. Um, I'm not into blondes, but Heidi Klum, great knockers, no doubt about it. Hillary Swank, put a bag over that. That's a two-bagger with great knockers. Thing is, if you had Hillary Swank in the dark, fantastic. You just don't want daylight to hit. That's one you hit late at night and you get out before dawn. Seriously. Jada Pinkett Smith, yes, very nice, very hot. We don't see much of her anymore now that she got married to Will Smith and became a baby machine. But, hey, she's uh, hot also. Like her. Nice knockers, too. Jennifer Garner, very nice breastage, beautiful boobs. I like them. I don't know what pregnancy did to those. She was pregnant, was she not? She had a baby with Ben Affleck. Trying to remember. Now on the list, I, I she's only on the list because she has uh, won Golden Globe Awards. And I predicted in the past that you're never going to hear about this woman ever again. Jennifer Hudson. Already you've forgotten who she was, right? Jennifer Hudson was on American Idol. She didn't even win American Idol. And then she was in that movie Dream Girls, playing a part that called for a fat African-American female. And so, of course, it was a part Taylor made for her. And, uh, of course, everybody loved her, but th there'll never be another part for her. You will not see Jennifer Hudson nominated for anything for the rest of her life. For whatever reason, it's just not going to happen. Okay? Dream Girls is once in a lifetime, and I hope she enjoyed the past year. Knockers? She's got knockers, but there's so much natural underwire there, I, I can't get behind that. Can't do it. Jennifer Lopez, I have liked her less and less over the years. My opinion of her, she's been bleaching up and trying to look as white as possible, as blonde as possible. I like Latinas because they have brown skin and 
dark brown or black hair and big brown eyes. I think it's fantastic. Uh, Jennifer Lopez has tried to minimize all of that as much as possible. Plus, she's never had any knockers. I mean, I'm amazed how many Latinas we have on this list uh, with no breasts. Where are the breasts? Oh, they're still coming. Don't worry. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Now, those are fantastic breasts. Those, they're absolutely unbelievable. Totally great. Uh, her breasts are so good that I will watch her in a TV show that I can't stand just to get a look at them. I like that. Jessica Biel, great knockers. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, now she may win awards like Grammy or Emmy Awards or um, Golden Globe Awards, but i uh, got to tell you something. Not much in the knocker department. Also, way past her expiration date. No doubt about it. Plus, isn't she going to inherit like a billion dollars? She's from the Dreyfus Banking family of France, and uh, she doesn't need to have great breasts. You'd marry her for the money, and you know it. Kate Winslet, big boobs, big everything else. What can I say? Uh, Kyra Sedgwick, also nice breasts. Uh, let's move ahead here to Penelope Cruz. Now, not huge breasts, but nice breasts. And I'm not saying your breasts have to be huge. They just have to be There has to be something there to work with. Penelope Cruz doesn't have huge knockers, but she's got classic breasts. Fantastic. A great package. Love it. Reese Witherspoon, not my kind of chick, but great breasts. I don't know what pregnancy has done to those breasts, but she has got incredible breasts. No doubt about it. Renee Zellweger, another two-bagger. How did this woman slide through in Hollywood? I don't get it. Come on. Someone has to tell the truth. This woman is homely. She was not just homely in Jerry Maguire 10 years ago. She's homely all the way around. Got to say it. She'll never be a guest on this show anyway. What a week here. It's true. Someone's got to tell the truth. You, you can't expect Jay Leno or Jimmy Kimmel to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you, okay? Seriously, Renee Zellweger. Uh, great breasts, but that body. <laughs> I'm, imag I'm imagining, okay, I don't know for sure because I've never actually gotten under the hood there, but uh, I'm imagining those are mushy breasts. You ever get a, your hands on a pair of breasts and you think they're going to be great, and actually there's like nothing there behind the exterior? There's nothing but mush? It's like you're putting your hand on some bread dough or something, you had a little too much water in it, you put your hands on there and it just kind of goes, you know, like that. I'm, that's what I imagine with, with Renee Zellweger. I can't help it. One of my all-time favorites, unfortunately, I had the misfortune of seeing many Many photographs of her when she was pregnant and didn't give a rat's ass what she looked like or who photographed it. So she ended up just looking like your average everyday slob. Salma Hayek. What did she do to herself? Now, I, I've only seen one photograph of her since her pregnancy. But she ballooned up in every possible way when she was pregnant. Uh, those are all-time classic press. I mean... And now we're getting to the Latinas with some action here. They, they, of course, she and Penelope Cruz are best friends. Of course they are. You bet they are. <laughs> and why not? I'd like to be both their best friends. Yes, I would. But, uh, you know, that's one where I i don't know. i got to believe, you know, what is she, 42 now? And the stretch marks are kicking in after the pregnancy. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I have a feeling that she has left her perch at the top of my pyramid. I do. Sarah Paulson, has, has she done anything since that Studio 60 uh, piece of crap went off the air? I don't know. Nice knockers. <laughs> I don't know what she does. Who put Cheryl Crow on here? How many years has Cheryl Crow been in here? I got to tell you, I was going to let you go through this whole thing and just let it fly. You're looking at last year's Golden Globes I'm talking pictures. about last year. I know. Cheryl Crow. I know. They're, you're actually in the wrong folder, but uh, it's it, it there these were actually compiled from last year's Golden Globes uh yes. red carpet and she was there and we were mocking her if you recall for not having any breasts. For not having any breasts at okay. all. Yeah. In fact, there's quite a few people in that folder that have no breasts whatsoever. Yes. yes. Oh no, I I well, I'm seeing that but yes. the, the, but the, nobody is literally a Cheryl Crow. No. Actually, there's some from this year that look just as bad. They look just as bad? Yeah. Except Cheryl Crow used to have great breasts. Completely deflated. They're gone now. They're, well, they're yep. completely gone. And by, by necessity, they're gone. But 
She had great breasts in her day. No doubt about it. Sienna Miller, fantastic. Uh, Terry Hatcher, I've seen her naked in Playboy. Mushy. Mushy breasts. <laughs> These are all opinions protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Mushy breasts. Those naked pictures of her, they were also on the Internet, all these uh, freeze frames, of, uh, these screen caps that somebody uh, posted on the Internet. Ooh, eh. Uh, Tina Fey. There's Tina Fey. What can I say? <laughs> you know, Tina Fey and, and, and Gary Zabransky being from the, from the, from the Northeast, as, as I originally am, I've been in L.A. 20 years, you know, Tina Fey is the kind of chick, like, in New York, people probably say, oh, she's hot. <laughs> like, in New York, people say she's hot. But nobody outside of New York thinks so. <laughs> Would you agree with that, Gary? Well, I can't get past this. She's got a scar in her face. Oh. Looks like she'd been in a knife fight. I know. And, never, <laughs> and nobody acknowledges it. I know. And it screws up, like, the muscles on the, that side of her face. She can't even smile correctly. I, th You know what? Scarface, too. I think there's a movie project. <laughs> But but even all right, look, even if she's a two bagger, all right. The point is, this is the guy that you know with the, with the glasses and the shorter hair and the whole. This is the kind of chick that in New York guys all get very excited about because they're used to the usual ball busting women that uh, they have to deal with in New York, and among that crop, to them this looks good. Okay, but outside of the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut metropolitan area, <laughs> no, on Tina Fey, no. Vanessa Manello, yes. Vanessa Williams getting too old. Great knockers in her time. If this were 1985, she'd be my nominee, but it's not. It's 2008. She's on that Ugly Betty show all the time. Although, uh, next to America Ferrera, those knockers look incredible. It has to be said. All right, it is our annual uh, Golden Globes Awards. This is a satire. It has nothing to do with the Golden Globe Awards. There. I said it. So this is your opportunity to vote for the best breast in Hollywood. So now, God damn it, vote! Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was in the shower, and I got out of the shower, and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, What What number was this? What number was that? Who is that? She's like, Who is, who is Kim? I feel like telling her, Hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it is the annual Tom Likas Show Golden Globe Award. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All right, best breasts in Hollywood. Let's start this off with Brandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brandy. How are you? I'm doing okay. I love you, Daddy. Thank you, dear. <laughs> You're welcome. My favorite Golden Globes are Natasha Leone from yeah. the Sons of Beverly Hills. Yes, she has great, uh, great breasts. Well, wasn't she near death at one point? I believe she was. I've been asked for her autograph several times, so I'm really proud of that. Oh, you look well, like I her. Mine are better. Really? Mine are way better. When I am I going to get a look at those? Uh, when would you like to get a look at those? How about uh, 30 minutes from now? <laughs> Where's your studio? Hang on, we'll tell you. Not allowed to say on the air, but we'll set that up. <laughs> she looks like Natasha Leon. <laughs> Natasha Leon, fantastic. Bring those right down. 1 800 5800 Tom, it's Corey on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, you know what? I got a. This is probably a bagger. I'm not too happy for uh, this girl's face. I don't prefer it, but uh, she got great knockers as uh, Christina Ricci. Kind of a high hairline there, though. Looks like the hair club yeah. for women is in order there, but. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, putting a bag over her head, but uh, her yes. knockers are definitely. Yeah, definitely. And she's had great knockers forever. Yeah. Like since she's the Adams family. I mean, she's had great knockers forever. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. And 
So uh, I'll just throw that one in there for you to, to ponder over. Sounds good to me. All right, have a good one, then. Thank you, Corey. Here's Francisco on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing, son? Doing good. Hey, I want to vote for Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek. Now, have you gotten a look at her since she got knocked up? Yeah. She uh, she put in a little bit. But you know what? I, I want to picture her from when I saw her in Frida. Remember that? Also, in other words, you're talking about Selma Hayek that doesn't exist anymore, the old Selma uh, Hayek. Yeah, but uh, that you'll never forget that. Just, you know, she. Uh, I think the only reason why I saw the movie just because I, I heard she had a full frontal. I have... Um... I have Frida on one of my TiVos at home, so I can skim through. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that. And, uh, had in, a in, a, in HD, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just uh, got to vote for Frida, man. Even after the baby, I think she still looks good. Yeah, you but know, I, I, I like I thick just, women, though. I, I like the thick girls. Yeah, but it's one thing to be thick. It's another thing to have the stretch marks and the veins and... Well, you never know. She might have got away without having any. Look at some of the girls nowadays. She uh, might have. I don't know. Yeah, she might just have, the, you know, a good skin where it didn't get all funky on her. But I, I still want to vote for Selma. All right. And hands down, Selma Hayek. Uh, take me out, uh, Kobe style. Hands down, Selma Hayek shirt. Uh, Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's our annual Golden Globes Awards, where you vote for the best breasts in Hollywood. Weasel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, my brother from another mother? It's your player partner from Pomona, California, man. It's Weasel checking in. It's all good, man. My vote is going to go for Beyonce, hands down. None of these chicks could touch your knockers, man. I'm pretty experienced. With I wish they would. Boxing. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty experienced, and I've seen a lot of knockers in my life. And I can tell you one thing about Beyonce, man. She's under 30. The chick has perfect breasts, and no chick could outdance her. Plus, she's an independent millionaire, so she qualifies to be the queen of knockers officially for 2008. Officially. That's it. By the way, did you see that Sports Illustrated spread on Beyonce? Oh, my goodness. I got another issue coming right now. I had to sh brother one off out of state right now because he wasn't fortunate enough to have one. But, yes, I was blessed with that cover, brother. Wow. Very nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I tell you what, if they could officially get me and you, Tom, and hire us, we could get this thing and make it all international and go around judging breast all around the world. That's right. Bring them back to Hollywood. I'll tell you what, right. we could get higher ratings than that thing NBC put on last night. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Yeah. We don't have to put it together. I'm in. I'm in. You know what? As long as the writer's strike is on, anything's possible. This is James on the Tom Like. I don't need writers, as everybody knows. James on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hey, Dad, how you doing? Doing okay, son. All right. I got to say Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys, ever since I saw uh, Smoking Aces, I've been dreaming about those breasts every day of my life. Really? Yeah, yeah. And I think they're better than Beyonce's, too. Oh, uh, they are great breasts. I mean, they look like flotation devices, no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, can you check me out travel, please? I certainly can. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge. Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Dave. Hey, the clearest winner for me is Jennifer Connelly. No, I know she has some kids, but, man, back in the day, those things made me want to slide in. The back in first. the day. That's the key there. Back in the day is also she's, uh, she's got to be past her expiration date by now. I know, I know, but, you know, it's an old favorite. I know Wrecking for a Dream was, you know, that was depressing as hell. But You're giving her the you Lifetime know, Achievement though. Award? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right, then, man. Take me out with a right wing wacko bong hit, bro. Here you go, Dave. <coughs> Here's Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yo, Tom, what'd it be like? Not much, Mark. All right, so I got one for you. I've been. This one may be past her expiration date uh, to a degree, and I haven't actually seen her for a while, but. 
in her prime a goddess, in my opinion, Sherilyn Fenn. Yeah, Sherilyn Fenn was pretty hot in her day. Where where's she been lately? I haven't seen her in anything lately, but uh, that's a good question. But she, I bet she, she still probably looks good. I would imagine. Well, you never know. Sometimes the reason you haven't seen them for a while is because they don't look good. But who the hell knows? We'll continue more of your votes coming up in our annual Golden Globes Awards. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I took your advice staunchly, and I've been dating lots of different girls and banging all kinds of chicks. If you only knew, more ass than a toilet seat. Love that. Oh, jeez. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's our annual Golden Globes Awards, in which you get to vote for the best breasts in Hollywood. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Steve. Hey, I got a nomination here. I think you're going to like Kelly Pickler. Kelly Pickler. Do you fantasize about Kelly Pickler? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. She's got some plump, luscious breasts. Is that all that's plump? <laughs> no, I'm sure not, but... That's, that's the, I can't do it. When they are plump all over... But it's... We're talking about the breasts here, the glow. Right. Oh, I, I, believe me, there are some fantastic breasts attached to 300-pound females out there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if there's too much natural underwire, I'm out. I hear you. Yeah. 10-4, can you take me out old school? You know I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Sharika on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love you, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's an R&B singer. She had an amazing year last year. Her name is Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole, of course. Yeah, she her face is not so much, and her attitude is horrible, but her knockers are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, but she's definitely uh, a butterface. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, everything's good but her face. That's right. Yeah, and uh, Janet Jackson's another one, also. She's like an icon. And I, I like her boobs, mainly from the I Get So Lonely video. So I got to tell you, when I saw her boob on the Super Bowl... <laughs> it looked a little saggy to me. I mean, I do think in her day she had amazing breasts. In the 80s, they were killer. Well, I think the I Get So Lonely video was in, um, like, 1990-something. Right. But she was, she was younger then, and they were beautiful, and I think they were perked up a lot by the corset. But Keisha Cole is like, she has a video like, uh, Should I Let You Go or something, where she's yeah. in this two-piece bathing suit, and you don't really want to look at anything else but her yeah. breasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, Beyonce, because of the whole package that goes with it, would definitely be ahead of Keisha Cole. Yeah, but Beyonce's got, like, like no ass. Her ass is not really there. You got to see it when... when you oh, I think Beyonce, she's got some ass. Of her, when she's standing, she's, like, poking it out. You know how they tilt her back so everything pokes out front and back? Oh. And she's amazing. She is amazing. She's a wonderful author. She's, she's very, very sexy. I bone her if I had a chance, but... <laughs> she, um, her, her, she really doesn't have much. I'm more of a butt girl. I'm not really a oh. breast girl. But Keisha Cole breasts are beautiful. They really are. Oh, look at that. All right, right. We, just, we just have to get a nice bag to put over her head, and we'll be all set. No, she's a double bagger. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> can you blow me up? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, this is Scott, one of your uh, one of your gay stepsons. <laughs> oh, very good. But, yeah, but I could still appreciate a good pair of glasses and a fashion accessory. But um, yeah, I was thinking uh, Katie Sackoff from Battlestar Galactic, um, Starbuck. She just looks great in a. In the a fact that you know about Battlestar Galactica that tells me something about you. I'm proud to tell you, I can't tell you what channel Battlestar Galactic is on. Tom Likas Show.